Let's discuss now the rising fears among Muslims in America with Dino Badala, the host of the Dino Badala Show on Sirius XM, and Saba Ahmed, the founder of the Republican Muslim Coalition. Good evening to both of you. Saba, I want to begin with you. How much responsibility should Donald Trump, the president-elect, um, claim for these hateful incidents around the country, many of them directly invoking his name? Well, first of all, I don't think it's Donald Trump's fault that a lot of protests are going on. I think a lot of people were scared into voting in for Clinton, especially in our Muslim community. I think we need to accept the fact that Donald Trump is our pres president and come to terms with his presidency and support him and in whatever way we can. I think the best way for Muslims to uh, engage uh, in the future years is for us to get involved uh, with his administration and get into cabinet-level positions or high-level agency positions to make a perhaps, difference. Perhaps you didn't uh, understand the question, so I'll read it again. Uh, how much of responsibility should President-elect Donald Trump claim for these hateful incidents around the country, not the protest, uh, that many are invoking, directly invoking his name? the ones that were just in the story about swastikas and so on, and people intimidating Muslims or people wearing... Donald Trump stuff. has condemned the, such hateful rhetoric, and he has condemned hate crimes. I think he, obviously he could do more he, in, in coming out strongly against those of his supporters that are misusing his name to commit violent atrocities. But again, like I said, Muslims need to step up their efforts in terms of outreach to Republicans and to the general American public. I think okay. Muslim Americans don't we don't need to play the victim games. We need to get involved in his administration and make a difference. Dean Obadala, Chris Kobach, a member of the Trump's transition team, has suggested that the new administration could uh, reinstate a national registry for immigrants from countries where terrorist groups were active. Uh, is this constitutional? Uh, as a former lawyer, I would say, actually, it probably is constitutional. It's only dealing with immigrants, not U.S. citizens. It is wrong. It is sending the message, frankly, Don, that any Muslim coming in is potentially dangerous. Uh, it's, it's alarming. And Donald Trump in this campaign, let's be blunt, uh, and, and I like Saba a great deal, but Donald Trump has said Islam hates us. He said thousands of Muslims cheered on 9-11, lying about that, said that we hide terrorists allegedly in our midst. Uh, he said, I want surveillance of these people. I'm not even American. I'm these people. Those exact words, these people. Donald Trump needs to come out and say to these people who are committing acts of hate in his name that it's wrong more than... Stop it. Like he's talking to a child. Come out and say it's wrong. Before the, the election, there were mosques in Iowa and New Jersey that faced with the word Trump. Like the word Trump is becoming a modern day swastika in itself to certain people on the far right of his, great, his base. So Donald Trump, come out. Be the president for all people. You want to do that? Get rid of Steve Bannon and come out and say this is wrong very clearly. Kobach says, uh, says that this is about geography and fighting terror, not an attack on religion. Does that make a difference to you? Saba? No, obviously, when you talk about religious discrimination, that goes into the realm of unconstitutional and illegal ideas. And I would hate to see anybody's civil liberties trampled in the name of national security. But at the same time, obviously, like I said, Muslim Americans need to step up their efforts in terms of their outreach to Trump. We have yet to meet, have a meeting of Muslim leaders with the Trump administration. We've had some people meet with him individually. But I think it would be nice to see the Muslim American leadership step up and accept the president-elect and meet with him directly and uh, raise their concerns and get him to speak for us. Does it make a difference that he said that this is, um, this, it's about geography and, and fighting terror and not about religion? You, well, he was talking about specifically the, the Syrian refugees, I think, in that realm. Okay. He's mentioned that, uh, you know, certain people coming in from certain state sponsors of terrorism should be monitored. And I think we already have many federal laws that ban visas from certain countries and certain for certain people, and we obviously don't want any further terrorism in this country. We do want to strengthen and vet every single person who's coming into the country with secure borders, with secure national security policies. Okay. But at I the same Dean time, we in. don't need to blame religion I, I, for it. You know what? The idea that this is policy or not, I'm not sure. The idea of the Muslim ban really wasn't policy. The Muslim ban of Donald Trump, which he has walked back, was clearly telling our fellow Americans that every Muslim is so potentially dangerous, I have to ban them all. That is scary. That's why we've seen a spike in hate crimes. That's why the FBI just came out with a report in 2015, 67% increase in hate crimes against Muslims. And I'm concerned it'll be worse. Now, if Saba, if you can get Donald Trump to meet with Muslim American leaders, I think many of us will be happy to meet with him. He might not like tried. the meeting, but we're going to push him hard on it. We're going to tell him, get rid of Steve Bannon, be inclusive, to acknowledge that you ginned up hate of our community in ways I've never 
ever seen a politician. Saba, before do you ever. respond, let me let me say this: Trump's transition team has denied that Trump has said anything about a Muslim registry. However, Trump exactly. offered a series of muddled responses, including to NBC late last year, saying he would implement that when asked. What could Trump do to reassure Muslim Americans? So, what do you say? See, he said a lot of things during the campaign. Not every all campaign rhetoric becomes law. And I think, you know, we do need to step up our lobbying efforts here in Washington, D.C., if we really want to reach out to Trump. I mean, everybody in his administration is very accessible. And I would just urge the Muslim American community, instead of taking insult and instead of uh, isolating ourselves, we need to step up and do our part in our outreach and be very respectful when we do meet with the president-elect and see him as an ally and how we can work together strategically for the next four to eight years. We can't afford to ignore the new president. We have to accept him and we must be uh, willing uh, proactively in terms of our outreach. Dean? We're, we're not, I don't know where you're getting this, that we're isolating ourselves from it. If Donald Trump wants to reach out to leaders in our community, acknowledge the mistakes he's made, apologize for demonizing our community, I think he might find some common ground. But let's be blunt about Steve Bannon. We've talked so much about the white supremacy or anti-Semitism on his website. He has given Steve Bannon, out at, during his time at Breitbart, he's given the most vile anti-Muslim bigots a chance to write articles, including about See, you, Brett Saba. Has including about you, negative. Saba. Bridget gave know, a horrible article that. about you. And he's let Pamela Geller write articles, Frank Gaffney, Gertz Wilder, a Dutch lawmaker, not even America who hates Muslims. He gave him a platform. Let but he's made all this. the people who helped him get elected, so he's not going to just get rid of them overnight. Does that make it okay, though? No, it doesn't. But we do need to step up our outreach. If we're not at the table, then we're going to stay at the menu. And I, we, I have to, okay. we have to engage Alrighty. with his administration. I've got to go. So, thank you very much thank for out you. of time. Thank I appreciate you. it. That's it for us tonight.